Hi, my name is Isaac. And I'm Louise, coming to you from the beautiful city of Bath in the UK. And welcome to another welcome series, which is called... Network Security Basics. Oh no. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, security is a huge topic. We're going to be focusing on network security specifically, and then really covering the basics of, uh, of network security. So why now, Isaac? Why security? There's not a day that goes past that we don't hear about security breach, the problem you know, with companies all over the world. I mean, just in July, for example, uh, we had a company that you know, went a little bit wobbly with an update and, and it affected networks all around the world. So this is stuff that worries people, that concerns people, and it was time that we spoke about it. Okay, can you um, explain a bit more about? Yeah, so let's think about the topic of uh, nutrition, for example. If, if, uh, if it was as easy as saying to people around the world, all you need to do is eat these three things three times a day and everybody will be healthy and happy and wonderful, that would be great. But it's not so complex, right? It's not, I mean, it's not so easy. It's a lot more complex than that. People have uh, medical issues. They have health issues. It's not as simple as that. And security is very much the same. There isn't a single package that you can go to the store and buy off the shelf and now I'm secure. It's a lot more complex than that. And so this is what this series is going to be. We're going to be unpacking that, trying to understand exactly what this series is all about, what security is, is all about. Makes sense, Isaac. Um, I'm excited to learn more. So are we looking at 30-minute episodes or...? No, it'll, it'll be shorter than that. You know, we, we know that people love the, watching the Welcome series and generally between 15 to, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I've got a lot of content, but 15 to 20 minutes, so easy to consume. Nice, let's get to it. Absolutely, let's, uh, let's hit that studio. When IT people talk about security, it always gets my attention because the first question that pops into my head is exactly what type of security are you referring to? If we're gonna be real about this, uh, in the IT space, it could be any of network security, information security, application security, identity and access management, incident response, disaster recovery, physical security, cloud security, compliance and governance, encryption, cryptography. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that doesn't even cover the entire range. In fact, I know that this just scratches the surface. There's a term we use in IT when referring to general IT security, and you'll probably hear it uh, more than once throughout these episodes. That term is cyber security. It's a term which probably best encompasses all of these terms I've just mentioned. And none of them live in isolation to each other. They're all related just like one big, almost happy family. When it comes down to it, in almost every single situation you can think of, without a network, a computer network, there's very little threat of having a security issue. It's the network, including the network of networks, the internet that enable and propagate security threats. We can't switch it off, so we have to figure out how to protect ourselves, our businesses, and our countries from the bad actors. Why the drive for security awareness? Why, why now? What's changed? Well, a number of different things. Firstly, there's cloud. There was a time just 15, 20 years ago, maybe, where companies bought servers and racks and UPSs and storage systems and hosted it all on their premises, right? Where they suddenly realized that, hey, all this computing power they bought was sitting idle for most of the day, swallowing up a bunch of electricity. This stuff was expensive to maintain and secure and didn't offer the type of portability of user data that was being demanded from regular users. It also pretty much blew up when there were significant demands on the system, which was often for very short periods of time. This became a financial and an IT management problem. Cloud computing solved almost all of these issues and in reality pushed our industry forward like very few things had done before. Today, cloud is everywhere and in everything. The next thing was COVID. I don't really have to go into much detail about this other than to say its biggest impact on IT systems worldwide is that it accelerated change at a pace almost unheard of in this industry, which then led to remote work, number three. While some companies still believe that forcing people to come to an office to work every day 
most progressive ones are well aware that going back to the old ways is over. And now remote work is here to stay with it. Massive IT changes were required. And then the expansion of the network, uh, building management systems, BMS, for example, smart buildings, even your home network, which probably has at least five devices running on it. Where's the network? It's everywhere. It's nowhere. It's anywhere. It's borderless. So those things really accelerated change, but they weren't the only things. Financial reward is another. There was a time when people who found security holes in operating systems or applications, oh, they were sent a nice thank you email and, uh, and their names might have appeared in a small news article in some obscure magazine. It wasn't long before people started to understand the value of knowing where those exploits were, and it very quickly became a business that paid very well. Suddenly, the criminal underworld saw an opportunity to make a lot of money. So financial reward became a strong motivator in breaching cybersecurity. Of course, not all vulnerabilities, uh, detection and reporting is driven by crime, and, and there are many good organizations and individuals out there who are doing sterling work of finding, reporting, closing down vulnerabilities and exploits. The motivation, though, that hasn't gone away. Another driver is regulation. Governments around the world have started regulating cybersecurity and forcing industries and enterprises to implement security standards to protect the privacy of their customers. In America, for example, we find the HIPAA Act which is a law enacted to protect the privacy of an individual's health information. In Europe, we have GDPR legislation, and in countries like Germany, privacy laws are even a lot stricter still. But it goes a lot further. If you want to do business with government in many countries, you need to comply with IT regulations. Your products often have to have built-in security before you can even get to the stage of a proof of concept. So if you want to be in business, you can't pretend these laws don't exist. It's comply or bye-bye. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're a security researcher or an expert watching this, let me assure you beforehand that you're not going to discover any hidden security knowledge in this series. We're not trying to discover the Higgs boson of the networking world. Our objective here is a simple, high-level approach to the topic. So sit back, relax, and join us on this journey. To a bank, IT security is one thing. To a hospital, it's literally about life or death. To the military, IT security is something on a completely different level. Just a few short months ago, a wonky security update brought airlines to a standstill. The simplest of businesses froze, even sports events like Formula One had issues and all because we were all dependent on networks. And if those computers couldn't put data on the network, the world came to a standstill. Don't think I've actually defined security yet, so this is a good time to do it. Fundamentally, IT security is about protecting the assets of an organization. But in the context of computer networks, it's all about the measures and the practices that we put in place to protect networks and the data that they transmit. I know that's a long phrase, but try and figure that one out. Try and um, memorize that. Try and have that in the back of your mind. It's so important. So who's responsible for security? One of the first principles of a secure approach to networking is understanding who is responsible for it. Where does the buck stop? Is it the networking guy? Is it the engineer? Is it the CSO or the CFO or the CISO or maybe even the CEO? The answer is very simple. Security is everyone's responsibility. Imagine finding a juicy, a couple of juicy 512 gig USB thumb drives or 
SD cards on the floor on your way to work. You look around, no one close by that, you might, that might have dropped it. What do you do? Do you hand it to reception? Do you take it to your desk? And do you chance putting it in your computer to format it to see what's on it? Network security is our, it's my responsibility. And the buck stops with us because we are part of everyone. To explain the season in an easy way, I'm going to refer to the CIA security principles. And no, 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 it's got nothing to do with the intelligence gathering organization based in America. The CIA security principles refer to three fundamental components on, of information security. It's, this is so easy to memorize. You just have to do it, right? Number one, confidentiality, C. Number two, integrity, I. And number three, availability, A, C, I, A. These three principles form the basis of a secure system and are often referred to as uh, the CIA triad. Let's cover what each principle means. First up, confidentiality. This ensures that information is kept private and accessible only to authorized individuals or systems. The principle is designed to protect sensitive data from unauthorized access. Some examples are encryption. Uh, by the way, we will briefly cover the topic of encryption later in the series. Access control lists, uh, strong authentication mechanisms. Think of it like this. Think of keeping a private letter in a locked drawer that only the intended recipient has the key to. That's the C. Number two, Integrity. Integrity ensures that data remains accurate, consistent, and unaltered unless modified by authorized persons or processes. It ensures that information hasn't been tampered with or changed during transmission or storage. Imagine the nightmare if you type an email authorizing a transfer of $10,000 to a third party, and that information is tampered with and an extra zero or two are added to the data, or a blood test where data is manipulated. So how would we you know, fix that? Hashing, we would use digital signatures, uh, checksums. Um, checksums, for example, they will help verify the integrity of data uh, by detecting any unauthorized changes. We will also talk about checksums and hashing in the series. An analogy, a good analogy for integrity is like, sealing a letter with wax. If the seal is broken, you know that somebody has tampered with it. Integrity, the I in the CIA. And then the A in CIA, availability. Availability ensures that information and resources, they're accessible when needed by authorized users. It prevents disruptions in service or data access due to failures or other incidents. And that is resolved with things like redundancy, um, backup, for example, and robust network and hardware designs. These help to ensure the availability uh, by reducing downtime and preventing uh, bottlenecks. A good a example, again, would be uh, a bank, you know, that's open, say, 24-7. You can access your money whenever you need it without interruptions. So in summary, Confidentiality protects sensitive data from unauthorized access. Integrity ensures data is accurate and unmodified. And availability ensures that information and systems are available whenever they are needed. These three principles, they form the core framework for security information and systems in almost every cybersecurity model. I once had a client back in South Africa when I ran my own IT consulting business, and they told me that they wanted a completely secure network. I asked them how much money they had. They looked at puzzled at first, and, and, and then even more so when I said there was a cheap way to do totally secure networks for them, just disconnect from the internet. Needless to say, um, they didn't get their totally secure network, but 
they were never breached either. So what would a completely secure network actually look like if you had the money, the brains and the time? It would probably look something like this. Please remember that at the end of this episode, we will put up a summary of the content uh, that you can screenshot. But if you prefer, we can send you a PDF of that information. If you scan the QR code um, that will appear shortly, it will open up an email on your mobile device already with the correct code in the subject line and the address as well. Just hit the send button. If you want to do it manually, uh, then just send us an email, send it to Extreme Academy at extremenetworks.com with only the words SECEP1 in the subject line. Absolutely nothing else other than SECEP1. And that's where we'll end this first episode of Network Security Basics. In the next episode, we will continue the topic of security by initially focusing on the topic of risk and how this impacts pretty much every decision that's made with regards to network security.